to hours. Um, see how long it takes. Since I know there's a delay on ECAM. Okay. And we're playing. Okay. Um, Here's what we look like right now. That's not bad, is it? Mm -mm. Boom, boom, boom. There's one on mine, but I can't tell who it is. Oh, really? All right, I was, I was fixing. I'm going to play a video. I'm going to try to play a video. Let me know if you can hear the sound. I'm using a new Ecamm Live. I don't know if I'm going to subscribe to or not, but I'm trying a new system. So um, let me know if you can hear this video. Can you guys hear this or is it? Oh, wait a minute. I gotta do one more thing. I'm trying a new system, so let me know. Oh, shoot. This is. This is not. There's nothing here. Can y'all hear the sound from the video that I'm playing? Uh, scene. It's not working. <laughs> Wanted to play that. It's not even showing the scene oh, no. now. <sighs> All right, I was trying to play something funny. Make people laugh. <laughs> on the current situation that we're in, but you know how it was showing me before? Okay, all that comes up is that. Okay. Still not. Okay, let me go back. Hold on. <laughs> let me stop it. Uh, let me go back to this. Now I'm seeing this. Okay. Oh. All right, it won't play like I wanted to. On and off. Had to buy. Okay. All right. That was a. If you go and if you search YouTube and type in "fear is the virus," um, it's a uh, mountain bear. The channel's Mountain Bear. He it, does some great stuff over there. It's just a cart cartoon graphic. Um, it's pretty funny, but. Oh well. Um, all right. So we're at Ides, uh, March, the Ides episode. It's our two-year anniversary. Ides of March. You know, we started these these things because um, just like Trump made America is making America great again, we wanted to make the Ides great again because the Ides d didn't used to be an ominous thing. They were a time of celebration and planting for the future. You know, it was a good thing. And so we that was our goal. We wanted to, to change the Ides. And yet... Was it yesterday, the day before, when um, Trump decide, declared this to be a day of prayer? We feel like our mission is accomplished, and uh, we have made the Ides great again. But we will continue to do. Oh yeah, and you know the Ides are actually a good thing. They were made. Uh, you know, everybody said uh, used to know it as uh, "Beware the Ides of March," and that comes from Shakespeare and uh, Hamlet and King being murdered. It actually goes with Julius Caesar and stuff. Uh, being murdered by the Senate, 
a lot of people think he should have uh, self-quarantined that day so he didn't have to go to work. He might not have been killed. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, the Ides used Hindsight's to be... Hindsight's uh, 2020, huh? The Ides used to be, you know, connotation of doom and stuff, but it's not. Ides were actually a time of celebration until Shakespeare got a hold of it. It was a time of a uh, new year and planting, and sometimes, uh, a lot of times it was, uh, people used it as uh, debt... They would uh, release people from their debt and stuff, and it was, you know, just a good thing, tidings, good things to come, plant your crops. Right. Time of growth and birth and, and renewal. So I think we're uh, on the right track with uh, making the eyes great again. And now we want to get into apocalypse, and people are thinking about apocalyptic times right now. But I want to take you to the original, uh, you know, the Greek meaning of what apocalypse means. You know, a lot of people... Um, have written that the book of Revelation in the Bible could have actually been called the book of Apocalypse because uh, in the original Greek, Apocalypse means an unveiling or an unfolding of things not previously known. And I like this part is in which could not be known apart from the unveiling. And me and Yvonne talk a lot just in between our scopes and stuff. And we're, you know, we think there's an apocalypse happening, meaning that there's an unveiling and awakening happening. And it's, I think it's in the very early stages. And there's a, there's a, apocalypse is a good thing because you start to find out things, you start to get knowledge, you start to see. Right. There's a and, great revealing and, of things that we didn't know um, and, and, I, and that wouldn't have happened if Hillary had been elected. There were, there were just a ton of things <laughs> that we were never supposed to know. You know, none of this stuff, Harvey Weinstein, I don't think that would have gone down. No. Um, I don't think the whole uh, Jeffrey Epstein thing would have been elevated you know there's just so many things we wouldn't have known about this the, the text between peter struck and lisa page i mean there's no end to the list of things we would not know if trump hadn't been elected and we i think we can all be grateful in that and so now we're, <laughs> we're looking at you know our our um, subtitle is faith hope and love and you know, in faith, what do you put your faith in? Who do you put your faith in? And I would urge you to, to turn to God in these times and actually before these times happen too because we're, you know, in the good times, there's he's there as well. But, you know, who do you put your faith in? Do you put your faith in the CDC or the NIH? Because we'll get into things later about, about these three-letter organizations. Right. Which, do you put your faith it, in Trump? Yeah. Do you put your faith in any man because... You know, as a Christian, I don't put my faith in any man because they will always let you down. We will. And don't put your faith in us. Yeah. Um, and research things for yourself. A lot of times on our on our podcast here, we we give you information. We don't. We, we give some detail, but we we add, we urge you to go look at this stuff up for yourselves. And, right. And make your own decisions. And I would say, so many people. We need to stop listening to so-called experts and talking heads and stuff and even, you know, big media influencers because a lot of people just doing work and raising their families in this country. So many of you guys and us included, you, we, we need to stop doubting ourselves. Stop underestimating we, your own instincts and your own thoughts. Your own discernment, what you think is, is a good way to do things. You, We have just as much validity on these things and, 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 and expertise in a lot of these things that's so, you know, these paid personalities on TV and these guys right. on social media and everywhere, you know, we don't make a dime on this, that's for sure, but right. we, we just like to get on here and try to spread some different news. Right. But do not doubt yourself as far as discerning and looking at things and, and deciding what, what is the right way to go. We, these these guys telling us right, especially in these times, what's you know the best way to do things. There's all kinds of experts on here. They were uh, Supreme Court, you know, constitutional experts last month, but but now they're now they're all virologists. So right. it's a good meme going on about that. Yeah, it's amazing. And so, who you're putting your faith in? Right. You're putting your faith in these guys that that their lifespan is about the same as yours, no matter what their station in life. And no matter what they, how many followers they have right now, you know, they have a just as much, you know, you have a just as much a chance of them as living to be 77 and a half years old. Right. As, as they do. So, you know, they're under, no matter what, at the, when it all comes down to it, they're under the same laws as we are, whether they believe or not. Right. Um, so so 
We, we, we want to talk about three different things. We want to talk about how this whole Wuhan virus unfolded. And the Wuhan virus is what they were, the ma mainstream media was initially calling this in the beginning. And, and then it changed over to COVID-19. Um, so we want to talk about how it unfolded and some information that goes along with that. And then we want to talk about um, the 1976 swine flu breakout, or the breakout that never was, um, not because it's comparable to the coronavirus, but the the actions of our government and these bureaucracy, you know, bureaucracies that we should absolutely not be trusting. How they there's a lot of similarities how they handled yeah. that and how they handled this. So it's it's not about the viruses being the same. It's about it's about them as the virus. They're yeah. the virus. And we also this is another season of three letter agencies of the federal government that are you think are supposed to be protecting us, but I don't believe that's been their, their, their go, function for quite the, a while. The federal government's not there to protect us. The CDC is not there for our health. Mm -hmm. Neither is the WHO. But so we were going to talk about that, um, and then we were going to talk about the CDC. Um, the CDC is a corrupt, they're as corrupt as, as the FBI. And there's some things that you need to know about them. Um, as, you know, they go and give these press conferences and you need to keep these things in mind when watching them. Um, and then we're going to end with uh, a, an excerpt from C.S. Lewis, um, which, which could have been written This is a passage about, in 1948. He, he could have very well said this yesterday or today. Right. And, and so we'll wrap it up with that. But um, let's go back to Janu January when you first started hearing rumblings about Wuhan virus. Um, well, that, I mean, you can go back and there's a video a compilation where uh, all the main, different mainstream media types were calling it Wuhan virus, although now, you know, now so two racist. months later it's racist to call it that. But the mainstream media called it that back in, May in January. But if you were calling it that now, you're a racist. Um, so that breaks out in January, and um, the virus had already broken out in China back in December, and it's my contention that uh, this virus broke out in China in December, probably November and December, because of the travel, the constant travel between the West Coast and China. Flights this, every day from China. Every, every day, day from China. Multiple. This virus hit the West Coast back in December, um, and early December. So it's not new. People are saying, oh, well, it's just now popping up and the numbers, we're just now at the beginning of the Wuhan virus. No, we're not at the beginning. There are people that have had this virus in, in January and I've seen people talk about it, um, say that they were sick and they were very sick, that it was a brutal f flu, um, but they've lived to tell about it. Um, so, But it goes to the whole nothing new under the sun. We're not going through anything now that we haven't gone through before, and even just a couple of years ago, and eight, ten, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago, 1976, and before that, and about every ten years or so, we have like a big right flu every, epidemic. But every two years, the so. difference this time is the way it's being reacted to, and the way the governments are are reacting, and maybe not reacting, but the way they're directing things now. The I think difference that, is, how, is the response to it. I think also that the timing of it can't be discounted. I mean, uh, Trump, Russia didn't work to remove our president. Um, Shampeachment didn't work. And then as soon as Shampeachment gets wrapped up, a month later, boom, here comes Wuhan virus. And, you know, it's hard not to be a conspiracy theorist dur during all this, uh, there's but, a lot but of we're conspiracy queerists. Conspiracy we ask queerists. questions. And guys, a conspiracy is when two or more people get together and plan something. Right. And, you know, a contractor uh, conspired with a bunch of people to build your house that you're living in or your apartment. Right. So let's uh, conspiracy theory came from the CIA pushback in the 70s about, right. about, about uh, people not believing the JFK, their, not JFK believing their stuff. magic bullet theory. So, um, but so it's the timing of it's all too convenient. And then to have all of the mainstream media on the same page about this, and it's all about hurting Trump. And now we have something on our hands because of the hysteria surrounding the pandemic, because many 
you know, social media types on the right have fed into this, um, which is leading to the literal shutting down of our country, which I don't think people are prepared to de deal with the ramifications no. of what that's going to involve. Um, just like in, in we have, we're not to the 1976 Spanish flu yet, but um, the reaction to it, the, uh, the scare of it was killed more people than the actual flu. And I sense that, that we're going in that direction again, in that direction again. And I hate to see it. Um, you know, why did, why did they, why did the media change the Wuhan virus to COVID-19? Like what's the purpose? You know, they don't do anything willy nilly and I don't sit here and pretend like I know why they changed it to COVID-19. It makes no sense to me. Why not just call it the Wuhan virus? We had the o Ebola virus, which was based, wasn't that a river in Zaire or? I don't know what Ebola was. It was, was a geographical. We had, we, it was had a ge West, we had West Nile. Remember West MERS. Nile. MERS is Middle East Respiratory Right, Syndrome. right. They're based after the geographical location from where it broke out. So I don't know why they decided to change it to COVID. Did they, did they uh, poll test it and it sounded spookier? You know, I don't know. Um, but those are just some things to consider about the, the virus. It's not new. It's not just now popping up. If there were, if, if our hospitals were going to be swamped, our emergency rooms were going to be swamped, I would think they would already be swamped because this virus has been here since January, probably December. And some good questions I've seen is, you know, if it's so bad and we only, we, we only don't know how bad because there's not enough testing. If it is this bad, why aren't these people in these emergency rooms? You don't need a test to tell you that you've got upper respiratory distress, you know. No. Um, Just because it's not confirmed of what it is. So if it was this bad and we think, oh, there's there's 2 million undetected cases, well, why aren't there a couple hundred thousand more people right. in the hospitals? Yeah. And so we want to look at 1976 with Gerald Ford. Uh, right. Soon sure. after, well, not so, yeah, a little bit after when he took over from uh, the Nixon impeachment. Yeah. So they, they had Actually, some... Actually, that, that was an election year. Yeah, it was an election He took year. over during the election year, and he wasn't doing good in the polls. And I, I don't know if this was his idea to create this pandemic square, you know, scare, or if it was his idea thinking, well, maybe if I do this, you know, he could, he could increase his poll numbers. I don't know. Um, but... There was a there was an outbreak at Fort Dix of like four soldiers, anywhere from four to, to 13, thirteen got soldiers. Sick. Some say two hundred and fifty. And one died, one soldier died, and um, and it was after a forced march, an overnight well, march. Well, but we didn't know that until yeah, we after. We didn't know until later. So the mainstream media come you know comes in, swoops in to the rescue, and um, starts reporting on it and scaring people into thinking there was rumor that um that this the the flu outbreak was the 1918 Spanish flu uh deja vu that's what they're mm -hmm. that's what they're always scaring us with oh my gosh this is the one that's going to be 1918 that killed you know the tens of millions you know we didn't talk million. about this in our pre in our pre-show prep but the the I'm starting to wonder about 1918-1919 because and it's just like and we'll get into eight, you know, eight years ago, oh eight. I don't remember the swine flu thing really big then, and it killed a lot of people. Right. But the Spanish flu, nineteen eighteen nineteen, supposedly killed millions and millions. It supposedly killed over five hundred thousand Americans. And when you want to put that in perspective, the Civil War, which lasted four years, killed, you know, some say around six hundred thousand, maybe a little over right. six hundred thousand people. But they're saying in t in less than two years' time, we killed. I mean, the flu killed almost that many people in America. Right. And you know, I'm a big history guy. I've always I've read throughout all of them, World War One, World War Two, a lot of the, uh, 20th century history. And I remember seeing it, but it's not as it's it's kind of like a paragraph. Oh, right. and after the Civil War, the soldiers going home, it spread the flu and and killed all these people. But I forgot about that. It, it's not emphasized a lot. And just in talking with. Um, Relatives of mine that are already passed away, grandparents and great grandparents, talking. To, I used to love to talk about the past with them all the time, and that, you know, it, of course, the Great Depression and World War II comes up, and, and somewhat World War One with great grandmothers, but right. 
the, the flu of 1918, 1919 did not really, it never, it's not a huge. It never came up. You know, even with my, my great grandmother used to, um, when I was in my twenties, I would go by and visit her. Um, and I didn't even know at the time why I was doing it. Cause I, you know, I could do whatever I wanted, but I would go by her house every week, once a week, usually on a Friday. And I would talk to her cause I used to want to pick her brain I was obsessed with um, all things Holocaust and used to just read every book I could get on the ho Holocaust and I used to ask her questions about it. But I would talk to her about history and all kinds of different things. 1918 never come, came up. She would have been 20 years old, around about 20. She was yeah. born in like 1894. Yeah, 1894. And um, that subject never came up. And Stefan Molyneux said one time, he said, if you think the f news is fake, wait till you find out about history. And so when you, th I'm not saying that the, that the Spanish flu of 1918 didn't kill a buttload of people, but I'm not sure that it, just like, you know, World War One, you know, that didn't happen the way they told us. We didn't know until no. not long ago that we intentionally sank the Lusitania or whoever did to yeah. get us into World War One. So I'm just saying when they talk about the 1918 flu, like it's just fact and, and what happened, we really don't know. And it just seems like now, today, it's like everything's accelerated. So it used, I think it probably used to be you couldn't find out about what is really going on with news outside of your at actual physical location right. until a few years later. But I think now it's got, it's, it's going to push out further yeah. a little bit. We're, you know, we can't, we don't. Where do they get when they say hundreds of you know tens of millions? Like I've heard a hundred million. Yeah. Where where do you get those numbers? Like mm -hmm. where, where's the? I want to see the names. It's just like with the the coronavirus. Can you guys name to me one person who has died? Okay, they they've given us um, somebody for in in Washington State and. But some can names. you name somebody but from your you, circle from your family? from your inner circle that you know personally that has died, or even from the H one N one. Yeah, from two years. Uh, and there may eight. be some of you, but the majority of you will not be able to name one person. Maybe um, even who's sick. So, so in that in that in the 1976, you know, as they were building this scare, um, that so the you had the four soldiers that came down with it, maybe 13, um, and then the one guy that died, and they played that up, the, the hysteria of it, and then. Word got back that supposedly the CDC has said that this is the strain. They say this from, is the strain from that 1918. Hasn't circulated in 50 years, and it has the potential to kill tens of millions of people. And so Gerald Ford jumped into action, and he uh, promised that he, you know, he said we are going to inoculate every man, woman, and child against this virus. And so they fast tracked this virus. I mean, not the virus, the vaccine for the virus, and 45 million people. 25% of the population ended up getting this vaccine. And that's once they got the vaccine. And they got the vaccine in about six months. And it was delayed because companies didn't want to make it because they wanted to be indemnified from jam damages. Yeah, there was the, that's the this, issue. Is that, of, that was the first time it come up where, okay, we're going to protect the companies. We're going to give them a waiver and you can't sue them. But if think become, about this. The companies were not going to move forward with this plan unless they got cover from the federal government for damages that came would result from the shot itself. Right. And they rushed this bill through. They got it done. They're, we're going into this. So this first started in January of 76, January, February. Yeah. And we get into uh, the summer and they're still pushing through. Actually, now I'm, I told you I couldn't remember. March what that, 15th. On March 15th, Gerald Ford received uh, a, a letter from the CDC telling him, wow, interesting that happened on the Ides of mm -hmm. March, that this was the, the strain from 1918. Um you know, which makes it that more. Yeah. So it helped him push it more. And so they got the funding approved real quick. I think it was like $135 million. $135 million in back 76. in 1976. Um, it's close to a They got it attached on to a previous bill that was already uh, right. going through Congress. They, uh, we get to summer and at, at the, this point in summer and you get into July, which they're ending the flu season in the Southern hemisphere. And so there's, it's not flu season in the Northern hemisphere. Right. Up, up to that point, there has not been a single case since the, the, at Fort Dix of this flu. Right. In the world. Not, not a single case. Not one. But they still, CDC, NIH still, they get together with the president again and go, 
Yeah, but the, it, it, could, it could still happen. Right. And then some experts were actually telling them each week that passes, the probability of this epidemic happening are falling every right. week. But no, so they, they finally get it that. approved. They get they finally get the vaccine around October, and there were some discrepancies with the vaccine about yeah. so the people that were tested were tested with a, a what's called a subpotent version of this, right? Where it wasn't as strong, and then what was administered to people was more potent. So they based a lot of their studies on the and the approvals on the subpotent version. Of yeah. It. So what the what the public actually got with the vaccine was not what they had in the trials. The the, the subjects got something different. Which I don't. How is that legal? Yeah. I don't even know how that's legal. And so we get we get to October. They start vaccinating all these people, and there's little anecdotal things happening around the country. People are having immediate reactions. And at at one clinic, I think in uh, Pennsylvania somewhere, three men in their seventies fall dead, dead. Drop dead within minutes of getting, of getting this vaccine. the vaccine. And now these guys had heart problems. Reviewed the recommendations. Of where the, they reviewed the recommendations of the Spanish flu treatment. So these three gentlemen dropped dead, but it, they basically said it had nothing to do with the shot. Right. And, um, and so... But the fact that in one clinic where they're issuing, issuing this vaccine... Mega doses. Um, maybe. Who yeah. knows? I don't know why they would do that. I mean, they're trying to get the whole population to take this vaccine, so I don't know why you would do something that way. And supposedly Gerald Ford was on... on video getting the vaccine himself and showing that he oh was, yeah so before the away. part of the you know this um psyop that they pulled off on the american population gerald ford went on i believe it was on all three news stations where he gave this uh speech and that's when he talked about getting every man woman and child inoculated and they showed you can see him getting the shot yeah that's true um, you can see him getting the shot mm -hmm. on live TV. Of course, um, Gerald Ford wasn't paralyzed, so who knows? Who knows if he even got the shot, or if it was just water, or yeah. you know, whatever. Um, but in your minds, people out here are watching. Well, the president's getting the vaccine. Gosh, I should, I should get the vaccine. That's how they convinced 25 million people to and get so the shot. So in two months' time, they got 45 million Americans to get this vaccine. That's quite a feat. Right. And but because people, of these anecdotal things happening, they before the year was out, they had already stopped. They stopped it. They pulled it. Right. They had to. And because people were with, what's the bar center? Uh, Ghislaine, I don't know how you pronounce it, Ghislaine Bar. Am I saying that right? I can spell it. G -U -I -L -L -A, -N -E. a lot of people I -L -L -A -N -E. ended up suing, the, suing the federal government for this. Yeah. Uh, their, their people died. Twenty. We think about 25 people died yeah, from they, the shot. I've seen anywhere from 20 to 50 people died. It's probably more. And then I, the numbers of people that got that were paralyzed was anywhere between 450 to 1,000. Um, and you know if you're dealing with the government statistics that it's probably higher than that. They're going to minimize what their damage well especially since the liability was on the federal government after the law right was passed. right um so when i'm talking about this i want you to keep in mind how um you know this whole thing that's spiraling out of control where we're just shutting down the whole country and it's you know tonight we we hear that um all bars and restaurants in Ohio and Illinois and Illinois. We just got a text from our brother in Nashville saying all of downtown Nashville um, is shutting down. Although there are restaurants down there that are defying going, going to defy right. whatever orders there are. Cause it's unconstitutional. The, so while that's breaking out like a virus, this, this whole thing, people bought into and believed what their country was telling them, what the CDC was telling them, what their president was telling them. Um, and, and so. Uh, and this is 1976. Right. And this is where 25 to 50 people died from the vaccine and one person died from the so-called epidemic yeah, one, that at, was coming. When all was said and done, it turned out it wasn't, they were wrong about it being the 1918. It was actually, I think it was the H1N1. I think it was the, um, is, if that's the swine flu, that's, it was the H1N1. It was just a serious form of flu. But as far as flus go, that flu season wasn't that bad. But they convinced, yeah. they, 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 you know, they led the herd, the sheep, into one direction. And how? And I, I wonder if social media had been alive back then if, when they were, when they yeah, were ushering they, this through. If, if somebody had said, hey, guys, it's just the flu. 
would uh, people in social media be going, you just the flu people are, are really stupid. Right. I wonder if that would be the case in 1976 if we had had social media. To, yeah, because now you have that. social media and you have a lot of power. You have a lot of power for people with a lot of influence that um, on social media who have contributed to the shutting down of this country. And, and a lot of people have cheerleaded the whole, this is going to be a new paradigm. There's going to be everybody can work from home. And I'm just like, I keep tweeting out, guys, there's millions of people that can't work from home. Right. Like my, uh, yours and my job cannot be done from right. home. We, a lot of people's jobs are at the physical location of the business. Right. And so that whole canard about, oh, this, there's, and I believe there will be positive things come out of this because that's how God works things. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, calling me stupid because if, and I haven't even been saying this, but I've seen people say, I haven't that said it's just, it's just the flu, the flu. but I know it's, you know, probably a hefty little thing to deal with, but it's being overplayed for some reason. And I don't you know, understand when it. you take COVID-19, it's the 19th version of this particular strain. And it is a, it is an influenza strain. I don't doubt that it's one of the stronger forms of influenza. Um, but I don't know that I, like you think of all the panic buying that's going on in there. Like I, I've tried to go to the grocery in the last um, week or so and drove through the parking lot and saw just the pan, pandemonium. I'm like, I'm yeah. not even going in there. Think of all of the, the virus that's spreading in there as they panic buy because all of this fear and hysteria, hysteria has been ginned up. Yeah. And which, you know, that goes back to nothing new under the sun. And it's what we got to remember is everything's happened before. Right. Um, and so in that episode with the 1976 swine flu, and I did not know this, that that was the first time that fear of vaccines, that's where it began from that, from all the, the people being paralyzed from that vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and then also that was the first time that vaccine companies had been given um, shelter or a waiver from being sued. And you could only... Um, sue the government and now you you don't sue the government they have like a, a slush fund no, it's just like what other industry gets that kind of protection when they're making right stuff? and so and right now they have going... they have they're talking about the antiviral this and the vaccines that they've got brewing now for this oh is it going to work as well as the flu yeah. because i know you know we have such high numbers that die from the flu 30,000 to 70,000 and they tell us that it would be so much worse if we didn't have um, the vaccine. Yeah. How how do we know that? How do we know the vaccine's not killing more people than it's saving? Right. So. Because that's what it did in '76 for sure. Right. I don't I don't trust any of that. And then we were going to touch on the 2008-2009 H1N1. Yeah. You know that was a big deal, but it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big. I don't because, remember it. And I'll tell you, in 2008-2009, I was remembering reports. Of, it was the election year. Obama wins, and then into 2009 is when it really started. Yeah. Oh, he won in 2008? Yeah. So and 2009? So, uh, the big news was the bailout. Yeah. There was a trillion dollar. It started with the Bush administration going to the Obama administration, and this huge money got to bail out the banks, got to bail out the economy, basically everybody. Right. That's what the, the news. And I really, I honestly don't remember you know, a lot of news about this swine flu that actually, what did it kill? 1,800 children? Well, well, when they declared that it was an emergency for H1N1, a 1,000 people had already died. Um, In the U.S. When all was said and done, 1,800 kids and 17,000 adults had died. And Obama was praised to the hilt. For his handling of that. For his handling of that. Of that. Process. And uh, I think he waited until November to declare the emergency. I think the first deaths happened in the spring. Yeah. And they were from Mexico or they were traveling. Right. You know, but I still, like, that's a blip in my memory. Like, I remember it happening and I remember them talking to it about it. And I remember thinking back then, I'm like, okay, rolling my eyes in which, you know, 18,000 people dead and 1,800 children dead is not anything to roll your eyes at. But this thing happens with the flu every, every year. Um and they had done they had done this before with SARS and uh, MERS and other and so I had just developed a you know okay whatever and so so now that I'm where I am today I'm like okay I don't doubt that there's a, a horrible virus out there that's killing people but I don't think we're, what we're doing is making it better. No, the the 
the cure is going to be worse than the disease in this one especially. Right, it already it's it's starting to be that way. It's going to be the same thing as um, 1976 when their vaccine but killed more people. Than what I think good coming flu. out of this is apocalypse is continuing. We're in the early stages, and I want to. I still want. To, I can't stress enough. Get that that negative connotation you had with the word apocalypse. Get that out of your mind. All right. Apocalypse is a good thing. It's awakening is a good thing. Right. Um, I wanted to read this um, this excerpt from C.S. Lewis. Maybe I can. Hey. Um, well, I'd like. So, can you can you guys see the C.S. Lewis on the coronavirus on the screen, or do you just see me? This is. If you can tell me what you see on the screen. Um, if not, maybe I'll just read it. Um, anyway, this this excerpt is from 1948. 1948, and it's on, on living in an atomic age. And it's just a few paragraphs, so just bear with me when I read this. Um, in one way, we, th we think a great deal too much of the atomic... Oh, just me. Well, hold on. Let me try one thing. Let me go here and go to... Let me just try it. I don't know if it'll work. It's not going to work. No. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to read it. You can't see it, but hold on. Okay, in one way we think a great deal too much of the atomic bomb. How are we to live in an atomic age? I am tempted to reply. Why? As you would have lived in the 16th century when the plague visited London almost every year, or as you would have lived in a Viking age when raiders from Scandinavia might land and cut your throat any night, or indeed as you are already living in an age of cancer, an age of syphilis, an age of paralysis, and an age of air raids, an age of railway accidents, an age of motor accidents. In other words, do not let us begin by exaggerating the novelty of our situation. That's, I want to that's emphasize that. Do not let us begin by or do not let us begin by exaggerating the novelty of our situation. Right. Nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Believe me, dear sir or madam, you and all whom you love were already sentenced to death before the atomic bomb was invented, and quite a high percentage of us were going to die in un unpleasant ways. We had indeed one very great advantage over our ancestors, anesthetics, but we have that still. It is perfectly ridiculous to go about whimpering and drawing long faces because the scientists have added one more chance of painful and premature death to a world which already bristled with such chances and which death was not a chance at all, but a certainty. This is the first point to be made, and the first action to be taken is to pull ourselves together. If we are all going to be destroyed by an atomic bomb, let that bomb, when it comes, find us doing sensible and human things. Praying, working, teaching, reading, listening to music, bathing the children, playing tennis, and chatting to our friends over a pint and a game of darts, not huddled together like frightened sheep and thinking about bombs. They may break our bodies, and in parentheses, a microbe can do that, but they do. They need not dominate our minds. So and I mean, those um, nothing can, is more prescient than what he said in 1948, 70 right. years, 40, 70, 48. 72 years ago, something yeah. like that. Um. So, as we wrap this up, um. Just things I want you to think about. Every it seems like everyone on social media um, has their own take, and and that's fine. Um, and we have our take. Well, I have our take, but it. I just want you guys to know that just because you have a different take, I don't think that you want old people to die, and I don't think you're being selfish. Exactly. You don't have to demonize um, the people that think differently than you. I don't want to do that, um, and some people right now are doing that. We do want to call to uh, people to account a little bit. Let's let's step aside from our follower account and our influencing position, and let's think about people on the ground, and just remember people in your personal area, your family, friends, and maybe somebody you haven't talked to in a couple of years. Yeah, what you can do to help them, because um, 
it, what's fixed, what's getting ready to happen, I don't think we've ever seen because we've never shut down like this. And I don't know what it looks like and, and I don't want to instill more fear. So faith, hope, and love, if, if you just go back to those things and you fall back on those godly principles, you know, we can get through this. I don't know what's happening. And they're very basic. And like, we have our own theories of what's going on, but that's just theory. Theories, so right. We don't know what's going on. I just know we I do don't know trust. know that what's being told is not I, right. Right. I don't trust the media. I don't trust my government. I don't and trust countries, Italy, China, you know, Iran, what they're reporting on. The, I don't trust any of it. I don't even trust what the states, and you know, in our own country might report. Because... 90%, the, the majority of people that work for the government do not like Trump and want him removed. And it's in their best interest that the economy crashes so they can help remove this president. So, like, I, I literally don't know what to believe. I, I just don't believe what they're saying. But they're I know selling. that, you know, and I don't trust a lot of social media anymore. But I do know that I still have discernment. And you guys out there, you have your own discernment. Right. And you have you have an inner eye that works just as fine as some of these people that have a hundred, four hundred thousand followers. Right. You have the you have the same smarts and the same good instincts as, as some of them do. And actually some of their instincts may be failing them right now, but right. We just want to encourage you to, that that there's there's opportunity you know, even though it what are, we're going into it might look kind of dark and there's gonna be a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs that are gonna be hurt by what's happening with shutting down everything, but there's opportunity in everything, and you never know what's going to come out of that. I know that um, in the Bible, what the devil takes from you can be returned sevenfold. And so I pray that over everyone that, that might be about to lose. So you, you can pray for your friends and family. You can, you can reach out and try to help them. There's opportunity in the storm of what yeah. we're fixing to go through. And that's what I don't want to we leave don't, you We with. don't know what it is, but, you know, pray for God to, to let you see it when it happens. And yeah. I pray for, for me to see it as well. Yeah, and I pray that, um, you know, the people that are gleeful in this, like the John Brennan types and the CIA that, that couldn't bring down Trump with the other coups, uh -huh. they're not going to be successful here for this either. Um, I, pray, I pray that they're digging their, their own pit, all of them. Yeah. And everyone that's contributing to this, this they'll be line. slain by their own, by their own malice, malice, and, and their their own weapons will be turned on them. They'll, their words will be used against them. They'll be right the way they've done the last few years. And, right. You know, it's 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 going to be all right. Yeah, it's going to be all right, and we're going to be back next on next month. I think it'll be on the thirteenth. The eyes will be yeah. on the thirteenth. And goodness gracious, who knows? Well, I don't think what we report on next month will be. You know what? We need to think close to it. It's going to be something totally because different. Because of all the shutdowns, I don't know what happens, but um, but we'll still be here to, to well, report. We'll always try to give it a different perspective and, and make it, you know, just remember nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. And God's remember, this. remember when you hear the mainstream media reporting <laughs> on something to give it the. The 48-hour rule. And sometimes 48 hours is not long enough. Yeah, sometimes it's longer, uh, like a I week. I think uh, some of the stuff the CIA did, we're not going to find out for 20 years. All right. Yeah, because that's another thing. You know, the CIA, we, we are, we, our government, we are still, even though we have Trump as president, our government is still the same government yep. that tried to pull off a coup against him. And those people, like Michelle Mockins got a, an article on the CDC, like 90% of the CDC is anti-Trump. So she's got a great article in there about the waste and the, the prostitution parties and all that. Stuff. Yeah, she does. Um, you guys need to check that out. And they're also uh, actually conservative incorporated is trying to take her out, too. So that tells you something. Yeah. When, when both sides, when both so-called both sides of the are trying to take are, somebody out. Are in, but, you know, when there's bipartisanship on something, they agree on something. Watch out. Yeah, I agree. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will be back next month to do it again. Thanks, guys. Oh.